If you recall from the earlier part of this chapter, we talked about standard input and standard output. Well, I'm now going to introduce a third type of standard something called standard error. It turns out that each program actually produces two separate sets of output. They both end up going to the screen by default. So typically we're not aware that there are actually two different sets, they just appear to be one set. The first set is called standard output, we've seen that already. The second set is called standard error. What is standard error? Well, it's where you typically find any error messages that a program might have produced, whereas standard output is, well, it's text that's not considered to be an error message. Let's have a look at a diagram that illustrates this. There's the diagram that we saw before. Standard input on the left and standard output on the right. Well, now we add another one, which is, it can't be redirected to a separate program, but it can go to either the screen or the file. It goes to the screen by default, and that is collectively known as standard error. Let's, uh, let's have a look at that now. If we want to redirect standard error to, say, a file, we use the greater than sign, but we use two greater than, and there cannot be any space between the two and the greater than sign, uh, which actually reminds me that standard output can be directed if you feel like it using the one greater than, but nobody ever bothers putting the one in because it's assumed by default. What this means is that any particular command's output can be redirected into two separate files if necessary, or one can go to the screen while the other goes to a file. So for example, you could send all the standard output from a program into a file whilst the error messages appear on a screen, or vice versa. Or you could put them both into two separate files. I'll give you an example of that. If you've got a command, say called command1, then the regular output you could send to a file called file A, whilst the standard error could go to a file called file B. It's probably time I showed you an example of that before you get completely confused. Okay, here is uh, a list of all the files in my current directory. So clearly if I do an ls of files, let's say an ls minus l of files, then I'm going to get the following output because files does exist. It's a, there is a file called files, if you like. So it would be fair to say that the output that you can see there is standard output because it's not an error message. But what about ls minus l of some file that we know does not exist, like xxxxx, and that is no such file or directory. Now that's an error message. And what I'm going to assert is that that output that you can see on the screen there is actually different to the first output that you saw on the screen. The trouble is proving it, but I will prove it to you. I'll do it like this. I'll type in the first command again, ls-l files, and I'll send the output to output1. That's just I'll just create a file called output1. And so I don't see the output on the screen, but I do see the file. Now output1 contains the following line, which is exactly what I expect. So now I'll try the same trick with the xxxxx thing, and I'll send the results of that to output 2, let's say. I still see the error message on the screen, no such file or directory, which implies to me that there's nothing then gone to output 2. Well, let's have a look at that. We'll do a cat of output 2, and it's indeed empty. It's a file that contains nothing, which is incidentally perfectly OK. Now, here's where it gets clever. It is actually possible to combine the two, files and xxxxx, and then I get both messages on the screen. And now, I'll do it like this, files xxxxx, and I will redirect standard output to OK messages, and redirect standard error to err messages like so. So theoretically I should get different stuff in different files. Oh, and this time I get no messages on the screen, so the error was, must have gone somewhere. Let's have a look at OK messages, and there's the listing of files, and if I now look at 
um, er messages, then I get the error message from before. So I'm pretty sure that that's a substantive proof that there are two different output streams going on here. I hope you agree. Anyway, moving on. It is also possible to redirect all of the output from a program to the same place as follows. Before I show you how to do it, can you imagine how you might do it? Just pause the video here and figure out how you might get the regular output, standard output and standard error both going into the same file. And I warn you, it's not as simple as it sounds. Here's the answer. Send the output into file A, for example, and then say that 2 greater than the standard error is going to ampersand 1, which if you want to read that in English means the same place as number 1 output went to. The number 1 output is standard output. Now I know a lot of you will have thought, well, surely I could have just done command 1 greater than file A, 2 greater than file A. And that's what I guess everybody thinks until they actually try it and find that it doesn't work. I suggest that you try it and see if you can make it work. I doubt that you'll be able to. I'll just give you a quick demonstration of that, or at least I'll give you a demonstration of the working version. We do an ls minus l of files and xxxxx greater than, say, all messages now are going into the one file to greater than ampersand one. I can't have any spaces in that little phrase, two greater than ampersand one. They all has to be next to each other. And now let's cat the file, all messages, to see what's in there. And I get both messages in there. I would get both the error message and the regular message in there. Finally, it's just interesting to note, and this hasn't really got anything to do with standard error, that if you don't want to see either one of those two different types of output, either standard error or standard output, you can redirect them to a special file called slash dev slash null. And you can think of slash dev slash null, or dev null as we call it, as just a black hole. It takes anything you put in it and it just vanishes into thin air. It's a special file in that regard. It's not like any other file on the Unix system. You can think of it as a, uh, a garbage bin for output which is nothing to do with recycle bins for files because we're not recycling files or putting files into garbage bins or deleting files. All we're doing is essentially ignoring output. If you want to ignore some output, redirect it to dev null. Let me show you a really good example of why that is good to do. Let's say I wanted to search the entire system for a file called ABC. Well, obviously I use the find program for that, so I say find and I specify that I want to start in the root directory because I want to search the entire system and the, the uh, name is ABC. And off we go and I get a bunch of permission denied messages. And this program is actually going to take quite a long time to run. It's just going to process away. More, there's some more permission denied messages. It's just going to keep going with a whole bunch of permission denied messages. And it may actually find an ABC, but it's probably going it, to, if, if it does find the ABC, it's going to scroll past so fast that I won't even notice it. Now, I've just interrupted it because I want to show you a much better way of doing it, a way of doing it in such a way that you actually get to see the ABC if there is one. And that is, of course, to send all these permission denied messages to slash dev slash null. So let's try that. We'll do the same command as before. And we'll send the error output to slash dev slash null. So any regular output is still going to appear on the screen, which is handy. The handiest thing of all is that all these permission denied messages will have gone. Let's try that. Oh, there is one. Oh, there's a couple of them. I really didn't think there'd be any, but there certainly are. Now. Those probably did actually appear in the last set of output, but it scrolled past so quickly that I couldn't see it. Now this program is still running, it's still scrolling through the various directories, but you get the general idea. I'm going to interrupt it now. The beauty is I didn't get 
all those horrible permission denied messages I just got to see the output I was looking for. Anyway, that concludes the module on standard error and indeed the entire chapter.